Hello brothers and sisters, welcome to this week's PPAP session. I am Joy Katigbak from Couples for Christ and I'm here today to share with you some of my reflections on paragraph 151 of Amoris Laetitia. Matanong ko kayo, nung nabasa nyo yung title ng session natin last week and this week na The Erotic Dimension of Love, anong naging reaction ninyo? Sinabi niyo ba sa inyong sarili na, Uy, exciting ito. Magandang pag-usapan to. But maybe some of you thought, what is the word erotic doing in an apostolic exhortation? Anang, hindi bagay. Now, when you hear the statement, sex is meant to be beautiful and holy, what is your reaction? Do you find it odd that they don't seem to go together, sex and holy being in the same sentence? Because the meaning of sex has been distorted by the culture today, and sometimes we ourselves begin to think that it might be bad or dirty. Or some of us might think that sex being holy means that you need to repress or hold back your sexual desires, or that uh, you need to be stiff and cold and without emotion in expressing your sexual love to your spouse. Kasi baka magalit si Lord. But Pope Francis reminds us that the church does not ask us to be cold or emotionless, but it does say that we can be spontaneous in expressing sexual love. But this paragraph has many things to unpack, but let me just share with you some of the few things that really caught my attention. And I'd like to um, share with you about four things. Pope Francis quotes St. John Paul II, and he tells us that in expressing sexual love, human persons are called to a full and mature spontaneity in their relationship. A maturity, he says, that is the gradual fruit of a discernment of the impulses of one's heart. So we will talk about ano ba tong full and mature spontaneity? How might it look like? And why do we need this kind of spontaneity in expressing uh, sexual love? Second, this kind of spontaneity, Pope Francis says, is needed because sexual love is a human experience. He says the erotic appears as a specifically human manifestation of sexuality. Kasi ang mga hayo po, they just merely copulate. They have a mating instinct. They don't experience sexual love. But we, um, we human persons are different. So animals are not called to this full and mature spontaneity. But we are not like animals. So we will also talk today about who the human person is and what makes him different from other creatures Third, we'll also talk about why do we have a body? Pope Francis quotes again St. John Paul II in telling us that our bodies have a meaning. Every human person, he said, must learn with perseverance and consistency the meaning of his or her body. This means that in order to express sexual love with a full and mature spontaneity, we need to know why we have a body, and what this body means. And since sexual intercourse is experienced by human persons, it is not just any activity. Our sexuality has a purpose and a meaning. Pope Francis says, sexuality is not a means of gratification or entertainment. It is an interpersonal language wherein the other is taken seriously in his or her sacred and inviolable dignity. So we will begin with who the human person is, then why do we have a body, then we'll talk about what is the meaning of our sexuality and the sexual union between man and woman as God created them. Then when we have answered those questions, then that will help us understand why we need this full and mature spontaneity, especially in our expression of sexual love. And throughout this discussion, I will be sharing with you some of my learnings 
from St. John Paul II's Theology of the Body. This is a series of teachings that the late Pope gave to us during the first five years of his pontificate. And Pope Francis quotes um, the Theology of the Body many times in Amoris Laetitia, including in the paragraph that we are discussing today. So we begin, who is the human person? What does it mean to be a human person? We won't have time today to explain everything about who the human person is, but I will share with you some of the things that we may not realize about the human person, but that are essential to our human nature. So as a human person, we are created differently from all other creatures. Among all the creatures that God created, only the human person is embodied. So we are embodied persons. Now, what does that mean? That means we are not just a body. We are not just a spirit. We are also not a spirit that was placed temporarily inside the body so that it could live on this earth. No, as human persons, we are a unique body and spirit unity. Ang hayo po, body lang. Ang mga angels, they are just spirit. Pero tayo mga tao, we are embodied persons, a body and spirit unity. So, how do we know this? Kung babalikan natin yung kwento sa Genesis, remember, God took clay from the earth, so that means we are made of matter, but He also breathed into it. He gave us His spirit, which tells us that we are also spirit. So God did not do this when he made the other creatures. So only human, only human persons are body and spirit. Now being embodied persons, a union of body and spirit makes us different from other creatures. That means our bodies are essential to our being a human person. They are not just a piece of property or an object that we own. But rather, St. John Paul II tells us, we are our bodies. So this body, this body is me. Kaya pag merong sum, na, nanakit sa akin, kunyari merong sumampal sa akin, hindi ko sasabihin sa kanya na, bakit mo sinakta ng aking pisngi? No, ang sasabihin ko sa kanya, bakit mo ako sinakta? Because this body is me. We don't just have a body, we are our bodies. And that's why St. John Paul II says, the body is a sacrament. And a simple definition of sacrament is that it is a visible sign of an invisible reality. The body is the visible sign of the person. It allows us to know and encounter the person. So the body reveals the person. But the body does not just reveal the person because we are made in the image and likeness of God, then our bodies are also a visible sign of God who is invisible. The body also reveals God. So you might say to yourself, ano bang connection ng katawan ko sa Diyos? Kasi we don't really associate the body with God. So usually when we talk about the body and the flesh, we separate it from things concerning God. But Genesis tells us that it is through the body, made male and female, that we are made in the image and likeness of God. Remember Genesis chapter 1 verse 27? There we read, God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. What does this tell us, brothers and sisters? This means that our bodies being made male and female has something to do with our being made in the image and likeness of God. If we go back to last session, we learned that man and woman are the same, but they are also different. Man and woman are the same because they have the same nature. They're both human persons. But they are also different. They're embodied differently. One is male, the other is female. And because they are the same, 
but also different, something becomes possible. Because they are the same but different, there can be union and communion. Through their bodies, man and woman are able to give themselves totally to each other. And that self-giving can become fruitful and bring forth new life. In fact, St. John Paul II tells us that in that moment of communion, when man and woman give themselves to each other, in that moment of communion, we become a clear image of God. Sabi niya, man becomes the image of God, not so much in the moment of solitude, as in the moment of communion. Brothers and sisters, in that moment of communion, the body reveals God. Why do we say this? Because remember, the God in whose image and likeness we are made is also a communion of persons. He is a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that God is an eternal exchange of love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This means that in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are in an eternal exchange of love. The Father pours Himself out and makes a total gift of Himself to the Son. And the Son, He receives that love from the Father and He also pours Himself out as a total gift of Himself to the Father. And that self-giving between the Father and the Son, it is so powerful that it is another person. It is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son. Think about it. The Father making a total gift of Himself to the Son. The Son making a total gift of Himself to the Father. And the Holy Spirit being the bond of love between Father and the Son. Brothers and sisters, our Trinitarian God is love. What kind of love? Fruitful, total, self-giving love. That is the God in whose image and likeness we are made. And so, we can just imagine that the fruitful and total self-giving love of husband and wife mirrors our God who is a Trinity. The husband making a total gift of himself to his wife, the wife receiving the love of the husband and also making a total gift of herself to the husband, and that self-giving between husband and wife bears fruit and becomes another person, a child that is born as a fruit of their love. What does this tell us? This tells us that through the expression of sexual love in the sexual union of husband and wife, we become a sign of our God who is a trinity. So our bodies are created male and female, not just for a function so that we can procreate, but our bodies are made male and female to express a meaning that as human persons, we are created for union and communion through a sincere and fruitful gift of self. That's what our bodies made male and female tell us, that we are meant to be a gift to another. That's why a man's body does not make sense by itself. Kung ang nakita lang natin, katawan ng lalaki, hindi natin mauunawaan kung bakit siya nilikha ng Diyos ng ganoon. And neither does a woman's body. It also does not make sense by itself. But seen in light of each other, they reveal that they are made for each other that we are called for communion through this sincere gift of self. Mga kapatid, this is what St. John Paul II calls the spousal meaning of the body or the nuptial meaning of the body. And Pope Francis quotes this in AL 151. He says, it is the power to express love, that love in which the human person becomes a gift. Only the human body has this power. When we make a gift of ourselves to another, our bodies reveal God. So, we've talked about who 
who the human person is, that he is an embodied creature, a body and spirit unity made in the image and likeness of God. We've talked about the body, that the body is the person, that we are our bodies, and that the body has a meaning. It shows that we are made for union and communion through a sincere and fruitful gift of self, and that the body reveals God, that the total self-giving love of man and woman that bears fruit reveals our God who is the Trinity, fruitful, total self-giving love. But there is another reality that the union of husband and wife make visible, and that is the love of Christ for his church. Jesus is the bridegroom who makes a total gift of himself to his bride, the church, in a way that is free, total, faithful, and fruitful. And that's what we learned last week. So this tells us that when man and woman marry, they don't just receive a sacrament, they become a sacrament. Remember, a sacrament is a visible sign of an invisible reality. So man and woman, when they marry, they become a visible sign of Christ's love for the church. This means that husband and wives are called to love each other the way Christ loves the church, especially in their sexual intimacy. That's why in expressing love through the one flesh union, we learned last week that the act must be free, that it should not be forced or manipulated, that it should be total, that we give our whole selves to one another, including our gift of fertility. It should be faithful, exclusive only to our spouse whom we will love till death to us part. And it should be fruitful and always open to life. Why? Because Christ's love for His church is also free, total, faithful, and fruitful. Mga kapatid, do we see the incredible dignity that we have been given as human persons? Through our bodies made male and female, we are able to reveal God. Through the union of husband and wife, we become a sacrament of Christ's love for His church, His bride. So let's go now to full and mature spontaneity. Now that we know who the human person is, what the body means, and what sex really means, then we can understand why we need this full and mature spontaneity. Now as human persons, we are free. We have the capacity to make choices, to choose between good and evil. And sex is also meant to be a free act. Oftentimes though, pag, pinag, pag sinabi natin yung word na free or freedom, ang naisip natin, ang ibig sabihin nun, pwede natin gusto kahit na anong gusto natin gawin. Pwede natin gawin kahit na anong gusto natin gawin. We can do things whenever we want. We can do whatever we want with whomever we want without ever having to say no. Hindi ba yun ang ibig sabihin ng spontaneous? But brothers and sisters, this is not the kind of spontaneity that we that will lead to our good. This is not the spontaneity that is consistent with who we are as a human person and with God's design for sex. Kasi alam naman natin that if we just do whatever we want, our tendency is to do some things that are not good for us. But what we are called to is not this reckless kind of spontaneity, but a full and mature spontaneity that is discipline. What is a disciplined spontaneity? First, it is one that is capable of saying no. Why do we have to say no? Because some acts are not consistent with my dignity as a person and with the dignity of my spouse as a person. There are some things that will not give my spouse the respect and reverence that is due to a child of God. And because I love my spouse, I will say no to those acts so that I can say yes to loving my spouse. So discipline spontaneity allows me to say no to the desire 
to use my spouse so that I can say yes to loving my spouse. We need to be able to say no because there is a right time and place for everything, including for sex. There are times, for example, that a couple has to say no to the desire to engage in sex. On those days, for example, when the wife is fertile and they are postponing pregnancy. So God designed the body in such a way that a couple can plan their families without using contraception and it involves saying no on some days during the wife's cycle. So there is a time and place for everything and discipline spontaneity allows us to be capable of saying no. Second, this kind of spontaneity responds to the person with love. Alam nyo, because of our sinful nature, our sexual drive often inclines us to want to use a person for our satisfaction. Instead of asking ourselves, how can I give myself for the good of this person, for the good of my spouse? Usually what we tend to ask is, anong makukuha ko sa kanya? Para sa sarili kong kagustuhan. For my own pleasure. Alam nyo, John Paul II tells us that there is only one proper and adequate response to a person. And that is love. Sabi niya, a person should never be used as a means to an end. Hindi dapat ginagamit ang tao na parang bagay. Ang tao ay minamahal. So discipline spontaneity allows us to express sexual love and the joy and pleasure that comes with it while seeing the full value of the person through his or her body. And we are able to rejoice at the beauty of being able to make a gift of ourselves to another and to receive the gift of self of our spouse to us. Third, discipline spontaneity is the fruit of virtue. Kasi it requires self-mastery, where we are able to sacrifice our own desires or wants for the good of the person that we love. Ngayon ang self-mastery, hindi naman natin yan nakukuha agad-agad. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na, sige, simula, ngayon, meron na akong self-mastery. No. Self-mastery requires a lot of hard work, sacrifice, oftentimes suffering, a lot of self-denial, and dependence on God's grace. So, this kind of self-mastery allows us to be able to express our sexual love in the way that expresses love, true love, to the person, to our spouse. And lastly, discipline spontaneity is also the fruit of discernment. It involves that we are able to discern, sabi sa Amoris Laetitia, the impulses of one's own heart. That means we can look deep inside our hearts and be truthful and honest with ourselves in asking, in our sexual intimacy, am I able to love my spouse as Christ loves? Am I really expressing myself out of love for this person? Or am I just looking for pleasure? Ang tinatanong ko ba sa sarili ko, what can I get out of this? Instead of, how can I make my spouse feel love? How do I see my spouse? Do I see him or her as a child of God made in his image and likeness or as an object that I can use? Am I able to treat him or her with a reverence due to a child of God? Or am I just using my spouse for my selfish ends? Brothers and sisters, this means really taking the time to look inward to be naked before the Lord and calling upon Him to bring to the light the answers to these questions. And 
these are difficult questions to ask. And we may be tempted to justify ourselves or to make excuses and probably say, ano ba namang masama dun? Pareho naman namin gusto ito. Ginagamit ko siya, ginagamit din naman niya ako. Saka mag-asawa naman kami. So, we can do whatever we want, however we want to. Alam nyo, in the theology of the body, there is a part where John Paul II explains um, a passage from the Sermon on the Mount where Christ says, But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And then he emphasizes that this applies to even the way that we might look at our own spouse. That if we look at our spouse with lust, then we are committing adultery in the heart. And many people reacted to this teaching of John Paul II saying, you mean even with my own spouse, I cannot lust? We can't even lust after our own spouse? And the answer is, yes, we cannot look at anybody with lust, including and especially our own spouse. Why? We go back to what we said earlier, that each person is made in God's image, a beloved child of God, a person to be loved and not used, a person with dignity, no person deserves to be looked upon with lust because lust is sexual desire emptied of God's love. Now, this can be a hard teaching to swallow for some. We know na mahina tayo, tayo ay makasalanan. At usually, we find ourselves wanting to think of ourselves and seek our own pleasures. And we might ask ourselves, Kaya ko ba to? Can I even love in this way? Alam nyo, on our own, we are weak and we will really find it difficult to express our sexual love in a way that is pure and that treats others, including our spouse, with the reverence that they deserve. But we must remember that Christ did not leave us on our own to do God's will. Hindi sinabi ni Cristo sa atin na, Sige, bahala na kayo. Basta sundin nyo ang gusto ng aking ama. Total, kasalanan nyo naman na kayo ay mahina at makasalanan. No, what does Christ do? He lays down His life for us. So that through His death, we may be freed from sin and brought back to right relationship with God. And maybe we have heard this so many times that Christ died for our sins. He died to save us from sin. But what John Paul II wants to remind us is that this act of redemption of Christ's death on the cross and His rising from the dead for us, it means something for us today. That it gives us something. Through this act, God gave us a real power that is at work in us and can manifest itself in our actions. This is made possible how? through the Holy Spirit working in us that transforms our hearts and makes us able to choose God's will even though it is difficult. And it is the same power that will allow us to express our sexual love to our spouse in the way that Christ wants us, with purity and reverence. Mga kapatid, we receive this power through the Holy Spirit and it is available for us to draw upon any time we want, every time, every moment of our lives. And no matter how sinful we are, no matter how sexually broken we may be, no matter what we have gone through, Christ offers us this power. Remember what St. Paul said, where sin increased, grace overflowed all the more. Yes, it will be difficult, Yes, it will be an ongoing journey. We will need to sacrifice and suffer along the way, and we may fall along the way. But we know we are not alone. Christ journeys with us in purifying our desires through the Holy Spirit so that we may love as Christ loves. Yun po mga kapatid, and maraming salamat.